Hello and welcome to our problem solving uh, sessions and today we're going to look at a well-known problem. It's uh, from a man named Henry Doudeney and Doudeney uh, was English and uh, this and produced many of the well-known puzzles uh, that are in circulation still today. Um, although recreational mathematics is thousands of years old, uh, Henry Doudeney and in England and Sam Lloyd in America uh, in the early part of the 20th century um, popularized a lot of recreational mathematics and um, so we're going to look at uh, Doudeney's uh, puzzle the the E puzzle and um, we'll take a look at what he's asking us uh, to do and here we are um, we go over and have a look at um, the E game or the E puzzle and it's just what it says it's the letter E with uh, spaces on it and um, the you have you need four counters of one denomination and four of another and the puzzle is to exchange the places of the counter so something similar to the six frogs problem except in this one uh, they cannot jump over each other so uh, they can only slide directly they can't go uh, in diagonals they can't pass over another uh, counter um, so uh, let's uh, set it up and um, We'll have a go. So you can get a piece of paper or you can print out our template. Um, and another one here. Division there and there. So that's our grid set up. <clears throat> it's a little bit messy, um, but as I say, you can print out the neat one from our um, our website. Now, for counters, uh, anything at all, you can use uh, use your uh, imagination and uh, something that uh, can easily be. Uh, differentiated is what you're looking for to make the uh, puzzle easy i'm using these um these are pieces from a game called tara um with uh, which is a, a a nice strategy game but we we'll, they'll do for this because it's what i have at hand <clears throat> so we can slide as many spaces as we want as long as we don't go into a space where there's one already so we can either start here or here and like the um six frogs problem of course it's symmetrical uh, so it really is the same whether we start at the top or the bottom whichever is your preference now it's clear that uh, this would be absolutely impossible if it wasn't for this space here so it's clear that this space is a passing point to allow them to pass on this if you imagine this is a road connecting these two and um, so have a go at it see how you get on um, and uh, I'll be back um, soon to find out how you're getting on so pause the video now and uh, have a go at the famous e puzzle so how did you get on with Henry Doudeney's famous e puzzle well, um, I'll go some of the road with you. If you've solved it already, great. If not, I'll go some of the road with you. So we, I'm going to start down here and we're going to go up here and move in there. And this obviously gives room for another one to come down here. Okay, 
Now, does, does that help us? Well, let's see, I can now come down here. So rather than making a space for this one to just go up there, it doesn't help us a lot because it's blocking, these are blocking the others in. So uh, that's not a good strategy, is it? So we'll come down here. So maybe take this one out, park it here, and bring this up, and he's tucked away there. So that's a help. <clears throat> so now the other thing about this is, and uh, you can always move back. So some people don't think about that, that they have in mind that you always have to keep going forward. So you can always move back up here. And maybe this could be used to bring this up here and this down here. And now we have one, and one uh, red one up here and one blue one down here. Okay, I'll let you go uh, and try out some more. Uh, that may help you a little bit. And uh, we'll see how much uh, further we get. So I'll see you soon. So how did you get on uh, so far? Well, we have this series of moves. Uh, so took that in there and we can bring one, two down here and we get uh, one red up in the corner. Then we have to move these out of the way, but we'll tuck that one in there, bring that up back up, bring this up out of the way and in here, we have another one tucked in there. So we've got one uh, in place in each side. Now, the next step is how do we stop the, how do we get pieces in um, into the end there? So ideally we want to start filling up from this side out, otherwise we're being blocked. So can you see a way of getting a blue chip in there? Okay, so it could be one of these are this. So can you see? If you can see that, um, then you're uh, well on your way to uh, cracking this. So have a go uh, from now and I'll see you again soon. So um, we're making progress here. So I was suggesting to you that it would be useful to get that one in at the end. So we should be thinking about how are we getting stuck? What are the challenges? Uh, and the challenges really are filling them up uh, from the, this side in so that the pieces aren't blocked in. So uh, we want to get a blue piece in at the end. Eventually we want to get a red piece there, but we're just looking at this end first. So we can bring these two red pieces out of the way. And now we fill this one up with a blue. Okay, so now we have to um, bring these back and let's have a oh let's um, move this here this here and we want to get this red one across in a similar manner so we bring everything out and now we've a red we've a red one across there and there which is a, a big uh, improvement so we'll have to just keep bringing things back around and um, we can bring that one up there and that one up there and this one down here and there okay so now we will look at bringing um we want to get this blue one out of there because we want to fill up there with red so that blue one can come down there we can get around there Okay, so these two reds now have to go up there and these two blues in here. So one at a time. Now the blue is uh, trapped there, so we need to make way for it and we bring it down here and tuck it out of the way here. And now you can see we're nearly there. We've no, no, uh, nothing in the way of our reds to come up here. 
and then our blues to come down here. Okay, so that's the solution, our A, um, A solution. I don't know if you're counting how many steps I took. Um, I wasn't, uh, but I might uh, play the video back and just count them myself and I'll catch up with you in a second when I've done that. So I just counted back and uh, it took me 39, if I was counting right, 39 moves to solve it. So here's a challenge to you. Can you do it in less than that? And uh, can you figure out what is the lowest number of moves uh, to solve the puzzle? So our first sequence of moves, um, let us see, one, two, three, and four. So it took four moves to get our first counter uh, to change place. Um, so there's eight counters. So is it possible that it takes four moves for each counter? Could we do it in Thirty-two uh, moves. So have a have fun figuring that one out. So Henry Dudney actually gave us a more uh, challenging version of this problem, and um, he gave us one with uh, called the motor garage puzzle. And in this, he has eight motor cars um, in a very strange garage with uh, no room to pass each other and uh, the challenge is the same can we move the uh, cars from the top of the picture down to the bottom of the picture and vice versa and but uh, in Dudeney's challenge he requires you to keep the order of the cars so they should uh, be in the same order from left to right so this obviously uh, makes it more challenging um, and that uh, means it uh, might take more moves or would presume it would so how do you think you'd get on with uh, Dudeney's motor garage puzzle um, it seems to have more constraints that you have to have them in uh, the same numerical order and uh, if there's more constraints it's going to be more difficult isn't it so you can do uh, this the same way I suppose we can just put numbers on our counters and if we look at how we might uh, tackle it this will be how we might have progressed in the past in their previous version and there we are we're fine we're um, exchanging them but we have a we have a two uh, where a one should be so that's uh, that shows that it's going to be more difficult so um, if you enjoyed the uh, e-puzzle, well, have a go at the motor garage puzzle and see what's the lowest number uh, you can do it in. And I can tell you that uh, it's higher than 39. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, the important thing really uh, with these is not about getting them out. It's about understanding how you got them out. It's about reflecting on the strategies you've used, what was good, what was bad, and what might be useful in the future with other puzzles. That's how you will develop your problem solving skills. So we'll see you again soon for more puzzling. Bye bye.